The Iceberg A piece of ice submerged in water, where the tip is only representative of about 10% of the iceberg's total mass. This can represent many things, one of them being a metaphor for a series. The deeper you dig into the series, the more information is there to be seen than at first thought. It helps you to shift your perspective and see beyond the immediate events that everyone notices. Which leads me to Accelerases, and its own iceberg of information, which led me to this image. In this video, I'll explain the Accelerases iceberg. At the tip of the iceberg, there is Accelerases in the infinite loop. Hot Wheels Infinite Loop was a mobile racing game in which you race. Basically there was Vert Wheeler and his Diora 2 Teku skin in the game, which potentially means Accelerators is in the Infinite Loop universe. Valken theorizes that since there are many Vert Wheelers, there are many alternative universes. Battle Force 5, Accelerators, and Infinite Loop. The reason for this is because Vert Wheeler is basically a household name for those interested in Hot Wheels, and much like Spider-Man, in which those interested in the MCU will know about, there will continue to be different versions and alterations of the character. In saying this, although very very unlikely, there could be a potential crossover between these universes which could be insane. In the array of accelerators, there are of course content creators. These include creators such as Nolaf, who provide insight into the series of the show, as well as display theories, some of which other YouTubers like Tom Wheeler and Random Wizkid do. Valken is also an animator of Accelerators, doing various models and working on animations of Accelerators content. Tezza's Cube also preserves a lot of the material from the Accelerators universe, such as deleted scenes and researches the overall lore, including special things such as how the Accelerators card game works. We also have JC Squared, who is literally Vert Wheeler in real life. Maybe he can tell us what happened in the fifth movie. The change in our characters' appearances came with the continuation of the series. From the world race to Accelerators, one of these huge changes were oversized feet. As another Accelerators content creator said, in which I can't remember the name, some of these changes were made to ensure the diversification of our characters, such as to make Taro appear more Japanese, among other things, such as to completely change a character based on the decision they made between the world race and Accelerators. Referring to the driver Brian Kadeem, during the world race he was racing for his people, he was racing for righteousness. This section of the iceberg refers to his death, to where he was captured to the drones and mutilated into a cyborg, thereby destroying his humanity, completed when he fell off the bridge during his fight with the Wild Brothers. Enduring such torture would turn you into a shell of what you were, making your human side effectively gone. Dead. This was Kadeem, a human turned drone from Brian Kadeem into RDK1. Racing Drone Kadeem. Jeff Gomez did a Reddit Q&A in which he revealed a lot of information about where his vision for the world race was going to be, and what the potential law for the series was. This included, in which I quote, Accelerators by Starlight Runner would have been more about how Vert and Co dealt with a race of beings that was divided upon itself because there were ways of expressing speed that were ultimately destructive to Earth, in which our heroes would have to figure out how to resolve this. After Accelerators, there is a series with Vert Wheeler in it called Battle Force 5. Although similar to Accelerators, in which there are battle zones, battle keys, ancient aliens, as well as callbacks to the original series, Battle Force 5 is not a sequel to Accelerators. Rather, it happens in an alternative universe. The overall jump from the world race to Accelerators is a drastic one. From hardly any violence to a lot of violence, including much mature themes and threatening drones. If we take a look at the drones, they are way more scary in accelerators and do unspeakable things, such as transform Kadeem into a drone. There's also the array of Tone's death scenes. Should children even be watching accelerators? The answer to that is probably, if they want to. Mainly because if we think of impactful good childhood shows, Star Wars The Clone Wars comes to mind in which there were also a lot of mature themes and deaths. There are comics of the world race that come with the world race cars, some of which reveal and point to information about the lore of the world race and potentially accelerators. Each of these comics go over one driver each and a certain decision and information about their backstory. 
In the comics, Banji wins the world race instead of Vert Wheeler, and Galorum has long blonde hair. There was, and currently still is, a card game in which you had cars, realms, exilla charges and such, which are still played to this day. Some of these cards add more into the lore of accelerators and explores other unexplored things, such as different realms and exceller charges. As well as this, the card game is based on the stats on your cards needed to complete a realm. Overall, there are a total of 246 collectible cards with cards of all sorts relating to accelerators. Apparently, there was a rumour that one of the songs in Accelerators 5 had inappropriate lyrics, and since the show is mainly targeted at children, obviously that could have led to the premature cancellation of the show. There are rumours that there was supposed to be a fifth movie, as well as even a sixth movie, some of which are indicated by an exclusive promotion of that movie, as well as some McDonald's toys making it through. Apparently, that continuation of the show would be of a divided joint faction entering old realms. Gomez, in his Reddit Q&A, states that Tara was named after a karate sensei who trained him and his partner, with the original name being Tayora Taro, Meizuki, which could have been the inspiration for Taro's Ethics of the Samurai, with Galorum's name being originated from his crush's last name in high school. This is just a theory. Just before the Water Realm, the captured drone asks Karma what her orders are, which Kurt reveals to be because Karma looks very similar to Galorum. The scene changes from Karma to Galorum, which can be interpreted as many things. Maybe Karma is a human version of Galorum, maybe Karma is of Acceleron descent, maybe Karma is a rogue Galorum, and vice versa. Since Karma did suspiciously predict when they were all going to get obliterated, there is still much mystery behind such reasoning to put this in the film. Cars in real life would need around four times the horsepower of those in Accelerators to generate the speeds seen in Accelerators. It could just be because of the night trucks, but to be realistic, the cars would need a lot more horsepower to achieve the speeds that they are achieving. If we take a look at a scene just before the Metro Realm, while Monkey is sleeping, we see a picture frame of a woman. Later, we see that same picture frame in Breaking Point, just before the Junkyard Realm, who turns out to be Vert's mum. Is Monkey into MILFs, or is it just coincidental that Monkey had a picture of Vert's mum in his room? As we can tell, Accelerators has a huge playlist of songs, loved by everyone in the community. From this, there are questions as to why they haven't been released to Spotify, or where to stream it from. And the answer to that is because Sony has the rights to the songs, and therefore can decide when to release them, and what to release them on. A potential factor for the cancellation of Accelerators could be because Mainframe's ownership changed to Rainmaker, also changing their name to Rainmaker Entertainment. The change in ownership could be why they didn't get future films, since the ownership was changed. Since it can be assumed that Major Wheeler was a Sansa during the events of World Race, as he was a Sansa during the events of Accelerators, a popular theory has come out that Major Wheeler was initially the one selected to drive the Diora 2, but his son got a hold of it first. And it makes sense. Tesla was working with the Sansas during Highway 35, and somehow, somewhere, Major Wheeler knew where Tesla's cube was. I mean, if we look at all our other drivers, they were more experienced, older, unlike Vert, so it makes sense that Jack Wheeler was initially chosen instead. There were unreleased Comic-Con figures, some of which confirmed the identity of the Sansas. This included Major Wheeler and Banji, along with some weird accessories. Mattel has produced a lot of animations, those including Bob the Builder, Barbie, and much, much more. Since those series were bigger than Accelerators, it would make sense to prioritise already successful projects than new upcoming ones such as Accelerators. This and diverting those resources to those projects, which could be why the budget went down for Accelerators, which is why we see so many reused animations. Aside from the human side of Kadeem dying, IDK1 could live on. As we see throughout the series, the drones can take large amounts of punishment and still somehow survive. This could be indicative of Kadeem surviving that suicidal fall, in which Kadeem can potentially lead the drones in the wake of Galorum's disappearance. 
During the World Race, there are a number of interactions between Krakatoa of the Scorchers and Esmeralda of the Road Beasts. Now, does this mean that they were into each other? Does this mean that they were flirting? It seems as though their storylines were cut. You could say Esmeralda was one of the main side characters with a few scenes and lines. Throughout the Excella Races movies, there are realms linked and related to the World Race factions. The Water Realm is related to the Wave Rippers, the Lava Realm is related to the Scorchers, the Swamp Realm is related to the Road Beasts, and the Metro Realm is related to Street Racing. Although this might be a huge stretch, the Storm Realm is related to the Dune Rats, since Desert Sandstorms can create lightning. In any case, the leader of each team fails in their elements. Vert crashed in the Water Realm, Tara falls off the track in the Lava Realm, Bandy's car is submerged in the Swamp Realm, Nolo, who was a street racer and the leader of the Teku, crashes in the Metro Realm, and Kadim disappears in the Storm Realm. And finally, if you really think about it, Porkchop and Monkey are metal maniacs and love junk, more specifically the Junkyard Realm, and if you really stretch it, they kind of fail in the Junkyard Realm too. There is some early concept art by David Earl and Peter Rodin in which they actually gave insight into the original look of the series. These included concepts for all four movies, showing the scenes and directing what would happen. There are also designs and logos in which have been since changed, and the storyboard of Ignition also indicates that Tone and Karma could have had a relationship, which is why we get that special interaction between Nolo and Karma before the Metro Realm. In one of the World Race comics, Harrison Lau interacts with Glorm, potentially working for her. Could it be that he became IDL1? When the two talked, Glorm talked about how Harrison had failed her, which could foreshadow IDL1 saying that he will not fail Glorm later in the series. This, as well as that IDL1, which stands for Racing Drone Lieutenant, could also mean Racing Drone Lau. It's also revealed that along with Lau and Kurt Wilde, she tried to hire other drivers, which could mean that more humans are working for Glorm. There is a leaked image of an unreleased car known as Titanium, which was a science car, never to be seen again. How typical. If we think about the characters, everyone has an opposite or equal. Porkchop, who hates music, opposites, is Shiroko, who loves music. Kurt Wilde, who focuses on racing, is opposite to his brother, who focuses on revenge. Tez's opposite is obviously Galorum, since they are the leaders of their respective factions. Gig is the opposite of Lani. Noel is the opposite of Tork, because again, they are leaders of their separate factions and have a rivalry between them. And I could go on and on and on, but you get the point. This theory entails that Scrim, the corporation that Tesla was working for in the world race, is the Sansas, which more than makes sense as we see similar technologies between them and that Tesla did in fact work with them in the past, evident when Gig says Tesla stole him from the Silences. Taro Katano is the only driver that says, I'm gonna pass you. Every time in the world race he says that, he draws with another driver, and accelerates every time he says that, someone dies or he messes up. There were actually two Accelerators video games, both of them were online, one being Accelerators track mod in which you had to make a track to a specific car, and the other being Accelerators Realm Champion, in which you actually raced. In Hot Wheels Beat That, there are a couple of discs around the tracks, and in Hot Wheels Alternate Racing, there are a couple of tracks that look like those of Accelerators. Those being the Lava Realm, Swamp Realm, Sand Realm, and Metro Realm, not to mention Ultimate Racing literally has Spectite, there's literally the fish from the Water Realm, the Swamp Thing on the Swamp Realm, and the giant spinning wheel of the second leg of the world race. There are also cars in Hot Wheels Unleashed, and of course the Aura 2 in Infinite Loop. Not to mention the actual world race video game. If we look into things, more specifically the Reddit Q&A, Jeff Gomez, who was the creator of the original World Race, stated that at first he didn't like Accelerators. I mean, who wouldn't when a company continues a series that you created without your input? There'd be a conflict in ideas and direction. However, Gomez has realised that he created something that's almost lasted two decades, appreciating Accelerators for what it is.
Although not explored in Accelerators, if we take another look into the Reddit Q&A conducted by Gomez, he reveals that Clip may have well have been a renegade group of Accelerons that wanted to conquer various racing realms using speed, and in this rogue group could have been a faction war which split the Acceleron ideology. Apparently the reason for the cancellation of Accelerasis was because Accelerasis was becoming too popular, meaning that Hot Wheels didn't want their brand to be built around Accelerasis but around cars and such which led to its cancellation. There are some patents on the internet of a potential season 2 of Accelerasis, those namely being transforming vehicle toys. From this we can interpret that since the toys generally follow the movies, the next defense of Accelerators would include transforming cars. If we also take a look at Battle Force 5, we can see similar ideas, transforming cars like those of Patents, similar to Speed Racer. You know how many crashes there are in Accelerators? There are so many crashes and our drivers to recover from those crashes at insane speeds literally just shake it off and continue to drive. If this happened in the real world, those crashes would kill the drivers as well as the cars even with their roll cages and everything. There was no surviving those crashes, therefore the drivers are dead and Accelerators doesn't happen. This theory refers to what may have happened to and before the events of Accelerators. It's revealed by Tesla that Dresden was one of the drivers that raced before the Storm Realm in which he was lost to the realms. Could Dan have been captured by the drones and turned into one? Could he be dead? This doesn't seem likely at all since there is no mention of Dresden from the Transform Kadeem and it's more likely that he's a silencer. If we take a look at the Bible, in Ezekiel 1 verse 9 to 13, this description turned into a photo looks like something very similar that we know of, that being the Wheel of Power. If we take a look at both of them, both of them have rotating rings, eyes and symbols on those rings, starting something powerful in the middle. There is a certain scene during the ultimate race in which Kurt reveals the origins of the transformation of Marky into Wild, where Kurt got them into a business deal where he backed out, but Marky didn't. In that he went to jail. If Kurt revealed everything he knew, he would have saved Marky, but would have gone to jail instead. Seems like that business deal was illegal, something to do with drugs, smuggling, or what Fast and Furious was supposed to be like. Basically, if we take a look at the world race, there's something really weird. Kurt's slingshot not only has what seems to be the prototype science's transformation technology, but what also seems to be the drone's electrical blaster. There's also the fact that the drones in the world race look more human than the ones made in Accelerators, and that the ones in Accelerators have been around for thousands of years. So, the silencers suspecting that Tesla might go rogue, found Galorum, who disguised herself as a human, to get the Wheel of Power, the Wheel of Power in she wants to get also and double cross the silencers. This explains how Kurt's car is a hybrid of both the drones and the silencers' technology. Basically, in the world race, the drones can't grab the Wheel of Power. There's also the fact that the Accelerons explicitly state that the drones weren't built for the realms, but also the racing realms literally targeting and destroying the drone cars whenever they get the chance to, some of which could have easily been one of our drivers, but luckily aren't. In this theory, Galorum was the catalyst of all the events to activate the initiative to reach the Accelerons in which Galorum explicitly states that the Accelerons left something behind, but that could be Galorum. Since without Galorum, many of the events in the world race and Accelerators couldn't have happened. Therefore, this theory entails that Galorum is the thing that the Accelerons left behind for the humans, to also provide competition for that racing realms.
In this theory, the Storm Realm is above the Ice Realm, the Ice Realm is a part of the fourth leg of the World Race, and that includes Hot Wheels City. This explains how Glorum and the Sansas reached their respective places, but also how Kadeem was captured. Anyway, that was the Accelerator's Iceberg Explained, what are your thoughts?